On December 8, we honor Mary, our Mother. The Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception is a Catholic feast celebrating Mary's conception without sin. The Immaculate Conception refers to the conception of Mary in the womb of her mother, Saint Anne. The dogma of the Immaculate Conception asserts that from the first moment of her conception, the Blessed Virgin was, by the singular grace and privilege of Almighty God, and in view of the marriage of Jesus Christ, Savior of mankind, kept free from all stain of original sin. Excerpts from the Circular Letters of the Venerable Servant of God, Mother Elisa Martinez, Foundress of the Daughters of St. Mary of Leuca. The Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, our patronal feast, insistently invites us to deepen, through prayer and meditation, our understanding of the indissoluble band between son and mother. In this way, we join the whole Church in praising God for the greatness He has worked in Mary and renew our confidence in her spiritual motherhood. This extend to us all, her children, because we are united to Christ, her Son, but in particular way, because our vocation identifies our service to Christ with the praise of the name of Mary. The more we are faithful to our religious vocation, the more valid and pleasing our praise to Mary will be. And we know well that those who praise the Mother of God will have eternal life. The feast of December 8, perhaps most, the most eloquent to our heart because it is the feast that allows us to feel more our closeness to Our Lady, a communion of belongingness to the Lord. She, through her Immaculate Conception, was preserved from every impediment that would not allow to be intimately united with his Lord. What the Madonna received as an extraordinary gift from God, in view of the extraordinary mission that the Creator was entrusting to her, must be in us the fruit of the patient work of purification to which we must submit in our interior lives to become souls pleasing to the Lord. Of course, we will never reach the perfect union of the soul with the Lord that Our Lady had from the first moment of, his, of her existence. But with our efforts, we can arrive far ahead that same path. I am writing to you, some who in one house and some in another place, and that you all already have your experience of religious life. Reflect on this truth and Our Lady, in the celebration of this great solemnity of hers, will be able to call back our religious life at its purest and most beautiful sources. And after all, will this be the fruit more beautiful than the feast? Let us therefore prepare ourselves for our common feast of the congregation in prayer and meditation.